I think the Guinea baboons are so fascinating because the males have these friendships. When you watch other baboons in Southern Africa, you have two males, they meet, they will hit each other. Our guys, they sit together, they groom each other's fur, they're cooperating, they're supporting each other. And that was really amazing when we first saw this. To arrive at such findings, researchers have to observe the animals in their natural habitat over a long period of time. Together with her team, Yulia Fischer has established a field site in Senegal. At that site, study conditions are ideal because hundreds of baboons live in the area. It took three years to habituate the animals to the presence of the researchers. The next challenge was to tell all the individuals apart. This was the necessary groundwork to understand the Guinea Baboon Society and to apply different methods to investigate their communication and social intelligence. You observe them individually, so you have to identify them, you have to know who's who and who's doing what to whom, when. And so you're just watching them day in, day out and trying to record what they're doing. And then of course we're also using audio recordings because we want to know how their communication system functions. And then we're doing another thing, uh, field experiments, where we play the sounds of, say, their friends or a non-friend or a neighbor or a stranger to them to observe the responses. And in this way, we're trying to find out what they actually know about each other. The researchers are particularly interested in analyzing the friendships between males. Yulia Fischer and her team use their data to answer questions such as, when do these friendships develop? Perhaps when the baboons are still in kindergarten? What makes someone a best buddy? and how do relationships change over time. But the scientists also study the female baboons and make some interesting observations. One question we are really interested in is how the females choose the males. So females have a lot of leverage in terms of choosing their, the males they're together with and they're associating with and some females choose the same male and stay with him for years while others are switching between males say after two months or three months they've had enough and they go to another male now we want to know why do females choose one strategy over another and we also want to know why some males are so much more popular than others so some males have five females or six females that hang out with them and others have only one or two or no female at all and what are the determinants is it because the male is particularly nice to the female is he sharing his meat, is he nice to the infants, or does he have many friends, and this is what we're trying to find out right now. Fecal samples of the baboons are taken from Senegal to Göttingen for analysis. Genetic tests reveal the relationships between the different individuals. And modern hormone analyses can tell if a female is receptive or if she is stressed. Guinea baboons live in the savanna. This is also where humans evolved. Using the results from basic research on baboons is also important for a better understanding of human evolution. So the big goal that we have is to understand social evolution. So we're trying to understand why some societies, primate societies, are organized like in a cooperative fashion while others are more hierarchical and despotic. And of course, we're also trying to find out what happened in human social evolution. And the guinea baboons are interesting because they are organized in a similar way as early humans. And in this way, we're trying to get a glimpse uh, into the past of our own species. Mm -hmm.